Hello. In today's video, I'm going to combine the concepts from the previous two videos, that is, the idea of big O notation and loop invariance to analyze insertion sort. Insertion sort is just one algorithm that solves the sorting problem. There are other algorithms such as selection sort, quick sort and merge sort that also solve this problem that we'll visit in later videos. The sorting problem can be formally defined as taking input A, which is an array of n numbers. And as its output, it's going to generate a reordering or a permutation of A, such that A1 is less than or equal to A2, which is less than or equal to A3, and so on. Remembering that indices are going to start from 1 and not 0 that you're most likely used to. The pseudocode for insertion sort is as follows. We have i which iterates from left to right starting at index 2. Everything to the left of i is going to be in sorted order. Everything to the right of i is going to be in its original order. In the inner loop, we then iterate over the left-hand subarray from right to left, shifting elements to the right by one if necessary, until we find where to insert the key. This can be easily explained through an example. So let's consider the array on the right-hand side consisting of eight elements and it's in an unsorted order. When we begin, i is pointing to 2. Everything to the left is sorted. At the beginning, the subarray on the left consists of just one element, a1, and an array of one element is obviously sorted. Everything to the right of i is in its original order. During the first iteration, we have i being set to 2 and the key being set to 1. We then want to iterate over the left hand subarray from right to left. So we set j equal to 1. Is j greater than 0? Yes. Is a1 greater than the key? Yes. We therefore enter the inner loop. We shift a1 over one position to the right. So now A2 equals 4. We decrement J and we consider the in inner loop again. Is J greater than 0? No. There are no more predecessors. So we now know where to insert the key. A1 is set to that value 1. We then proceed onwards. i is now set to 3 and the key is also set to 3. a3 after all is 3. We then once again consider the left hand subarray now consisting of elements a1 and a2. So we consider the inner loop once again. Is j greater than 0? Yes. Is a2 greater than the key? Yes. a2 is 4. The key is 3. We therefore shift a2 one position to the right so a3 gets the value from a2 and we decrement j. Is j greater than 0? Yes. Is a1 greater than the key? No. a1 is 1, the key is 3. So we now know where we have to insert the key. a2 gets the value of the key. This gives us 1, 3, 4 in the left-hand subarray. And i is now 4. And a4 is equal to 6. We then consider once again the left-hand subarray, now consisting of a1, a2, a3. Remember we go from right to left from this subarray, so j is set to 3. Is j greater than 0? Yes. Is a3 greater than the key? No. 
a3 is 4, the key is 6. So we don't need to move the key. It's in its rightful place at this time. I won't go through the rest of the array. Hopefully the few steps that I have gone through have made the process of insertion sort clearer. If not, I highly recommend sitting down with pen and paper and working through a few examples yourself. Let's now consider the loop invariant for insertion sort. Remember when we first begin, i is set to two. The left hand subarray, so everything to the left of this index is sorted. When we start, the left hand subarray consists of just one element, which obviously an array of one element is sorted and everything to the right is in its original order. This gives us the loop invariant, the subarray A1 through I minus one consists of the element originally in this subarray, but in a sorted order. Remember, we have to show three things for the loop invariant. The first is the initialization. So I is set to two. So the subarray just consists of A1. This is clearly true. Next, we have to show that the loop invariant is maintained. So informally, the inner loop works by moving a i minus one, a i minus two, etc., one place to the right until we find the correct place to insert the key. The subarray a one through i then contains the original elements, but now in a sorted order. Then when we increment i for the next iteration, we preserve the loop invariant. Finally, we have to show that after the loop terminates, that we have a useful property. So at the end of the outer loop, i is the length of a plus one. We can substitute this into the loop invariant, which gives us the subarray a one through length of a. This is the entire array so we can conclude that the array has been sorted. Let's now take a look at working out the big O for insertion sort. To make our lives easier, on the left hand side, I've added line numbers to the pseudocode. And on the right hand side, we have a table that shows the cost of executing each line of code and the number of times each line is executed. So for example, C1 corresponds to the cost of executing line one, and we can see that it's executed n times. C2 corresponds to the cost of executing line two, and it is executed n minus one times, and so on. Let's now think about the worst case Remember, big O is focused around the worst case. Our outer loop is executed from i equals two to the length of a, and the inner loop is executed from j equals i minus one to j equals zero. In the worst case, the array is in descending order we have to move every element in the left-hand subarray over one position. By summing the product of the cost and the number of times executed, we get the following equation. We should be able to see, for instance, there are several n squared terms in there. So when we simplify this equation, this gives us a dominating factor of a big O of n squared. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be informative. If you have, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in a later video.